there, welcome to the tutorial on rendering and the different types of output iClone 5 is capable of. Here you're going to learn about some cool and creative options for exporting with iClone 5. All of these projects you see here were started in iClone 5, and all of them are quite easy to do. Let's start off with a simple image render. To render any scene in iClone, you first need to find the camera angle you want to render from, and then go up to the Export tab. From there, you can see you have a number of different image format export options. If transparency or image sequence is not needed, you can just opt for the single JPEG format. You can change the quality for a larger or smaller file size here, and if you want to, you can customize the size of your image. It will always stay in one of the standard resolutions, but if you want something different, you can disable the ratio lock and produce a non-standard sized image. There are some size templates in the drop-down menu that you may select as well, but I'll just keep mine at the standard 720p. There are also a number of render quality settings, such as Preview or Final Render Quality, Anti-Alias, and AO or Tune Super Sampling. If your scene has tune shading or ambient occlusion like this one, make sure you select this option to get your proper render result. After that, simply click Export to produce your image. And there you have it. You can zoom your image in many ways, and even immediately save it as a different file. Okay, in this next scene, I'll show you how to pose a character and use it in a commercial image such as a magazine or a comic. I have my character in a pose here, and I'm adjusting her head position using the motion key editor. Simply use the rotate function to give her a model pose. I can also use the Face Key Editor in the Facial Animation section to make subtle changes to my character's expression by using either Muscle Editing or Facial Detail Editing. You can create a really specific expression using these tools. Once I've finished my pose, I'll want to export into Targa format because I want a transparent image layer for Photoshop. Make sure if you want a transparent image that you go into the advanced option and choose 32-bit as this will produce an alpha channel for your image, which will make it easier to cut out. You'll see your image come up with a black background once you save it. So now, go into Photoshop and open up your image, as well as the destination image you wish to export to. Once you've done that, Go into your image channels for your iClone model and select the alpha channel. Then make your alpha layer a selection. This is the advantage of exporting to Targa format. You can use the alpha channel to make quick selections. Next, go back into your background layer and cut it out by pressing Ctrl X. You can create a new transparent layer and then delete the old background. Finally, paste your alpha channel selection onto the new transparent layer. I'm going to apply a quick filter to this layer to make it match the black and white theme of the background more. I can use this torn edge effect and then fool around with the sliders a bit to get the effect that I want. After I've done that, I'll press Ctrl A to select my whole layer, then paste it onto my desired background image. I've now successfully imported my posed character from iClone. With the right sort of styling, this image could be a pretty nice ad for a newspaper, magazine, or anything else. Okay, in this next section, I'll export an animated GIF that can be used in a PowerPoint or any other project you may have. First, I'll apply the action to my character Wanda here. When she's finished, there are just a few more simple steps. I need to be in the Image Sequence section of the Export tab and select GIF Sequence. In the Advanced Options, I'll want to choose Transparent, which will make it similar to my last effort. I'll make the image dimensions a bit larger here as well. Notice that the animation ended at frame 534, 
so for the range of my render, I'll set that as the upper limit. With GIFs, you normally don't want too high of a frame rate, as you may get some slower animation results, not to mention a larger file size. It depends on the size of your images as well, of course. I'll set mine to 12 and export. You can see the render moves pretty quickly. So now I have my PowerPoint open and I'll go up to the menu and insert my Wanda image. If I resize and move some stuff around, you can see the nice result of this transparent image when I start the PowerPoint. You can use this type of easy export option to enhance your next presentation easily. You can also export transparent target sequences for better image quality. Let's do the same thing as before and apply a little animation to Matilda here. I'm in the image sequence section again, and this time I'll select the 32-bit Targa image sequence. As with last time, I'll enter in the proper frame amount again, and move on to export. You can name your file, and once the export is finished, you'll have a whole series of Targa files numerically ordered under that name. What I want to do next is import them as a single Targa clip in Premiere. To do this, I'll first go up to Import, then select the first image of my sequence only. I need to make sure that the Numbered Stills option is selected at the bottom of the window, and then press OK. It will now import as a single Targa sequence. I'll import it quickly into my video track here, and here is what it will look like. I might want to add a fade-in effect so she doesn't appear so fast. So to do that, I'll simply go to the effects and drag in a cross dissolve. Here is the final results. Okay, so now I'm going to assemble a scene for 3D image rendering. I'm right click dragging a transparent zombie image in here from Explorer, and I want to import it as an image plane, which means I can move and manipulate it around the screen. What I want to do here is maybe resize it a bit and move it into the correct position. Use the R hotkey to toggle the resize gizmo and the W hotkey for the movement gizmo once your object is selected. You'll notice a slight white halo around my character when I import it as an image plane, but this can be fixed by adjusting the alpha threshold in the modify panel to the right. You can see as I move the slider that the white border eventually disappears. Next, I'm going to import in this title that I made in Photoshop as the same type of image plane. I want the objects in my scene to be image planes so that I can move them around in my scene for a better 3D effect. Again, just reposition that title behind the zombie's head and we're set. Now I'll move on to the 3D render. I'm going to switch to my preview camera so I can get a better view of my main objects and the scene camera from the side. But open the mini viewport so I can still see the main camera view as well. I can pan and orbit around my 2D layers and the main camera to get a better view of the distance. Next I'll press Ctrl G so I can estimate the distance between the camera and the focal objects. Each square on the grid represents 100 centimeters. Notice that there is about 400 centimeters between my camera and my main zombie dude. If I want to make any final adjustments using the preview camera, I can do that as well with the movement gizmo. Notice that I can still see my camera view in the viewport. This makes a pretty convenient way to set up 3D rendered scenes. So now I'm back to render my scene. Make sure that you have Enable Stereo Vision Output selected in the Render menu. Keep in mind that you can also select different types of 3D as well. The convergence distance is essentially where I want my 3D render to focus, and it uses the same measurements as the grid. Anything in front of that point will seem to pop out, while things behind it will seem further off when viewed with 3D glasses. So I've put it to about 400, which was the distance to my zombie. This is the result. See that the zombie is pretty focused while the car and the background buildings seem a little far off. 
if I put it up to 100 and then preview, you're going to get a whole lot of eye screen, as the 3D is trying to force all of the objects into the distance using the 3D effect. However, if I put it up to 1000 and preview again, you can notice that the zombie seems to pop out a whole lot more, and the car does as well. I'd say ideally I want to render this scene with a convergence point of about 700, which is behind the zombie but in front of the car, almost as if I'm looking at the car and the zombie pops out in front of me. Now that's a scary effect. Okay, now naturally you can also render videos in iClone as well. I'm going to take you on a trip through this scene here. You can see that I have a path intertwining between these stone arches here, and I also have a camera attached to follow this path. Let's switch to that camera now. If I scrub through the timeline, you can see the wild 3D ride you're about to go on. This time, I'm going to add in an image layer. When you add an image layer into a 3D scene, it will always be placed at the same place on the 3D plane where you set your convergence point. So, for example, if you set your convergence point to 100 or 1000, the image plane will always be the focal object in your scene. If you want something to pop out or seem far off in the distance, then it's better to use image planes like in the previous example. So now, I need to go to Video Options. Again, you can see there are a number of different formats available, but I'll just leave mine at the standard AVI. The file sizes may be a bit larger, but the end result normally has better quality. If you want, you can also export flash video for use on the web quite easily. You even have the option to generate an HTML page along with it. Again, you can also resize your render screen or select from any number of templates in the drop-down menu as well. You can also set options like the pixel aspect ratio, convergence distance, and you also have the option to render hidden objects such as dummies and objects not shown on the scene at the time. If you want to manually set your render length, you can also use the small blue indicator on the bottom of the timeline and slide it back and forth. Notice how the render range changes as I do this. Frame rate is pretty important in video renders, so make sure that if you want a higher quality of playback, you choose a higher frame rate. Let's move on to rendering now. So I'll click export and I just need to select my name and the type of encoding I want for my video and then press OK. Once it's finished rendering, I'll have a cool 3D result like this. You can find your own image layers and do the same thing. 